Chapter One. Oh no! Fairly Jones moaned as the car engine began to sputter. Not now. Of course. Then again, when is a good time for you to conk out on me? Pumping the accelerator a bit with her foot, Fairly added, "Come on now. We're almost to Uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl's." But the car engine sputtered again, and then began making a telltale clunking noise. Wonderful, just wonderful," Fairly moaned as she pulled the car to the side of the isolated rural road. With a loud thunk, the engine gave up the ghost. Fairly sighed with fatigue and discouragement. She'd been driving all day and couldn't believe her car had decided to give out. A mere five miles from her uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl's farm, inhaling a deep breath and exhaling it with discouragement, Fairly opened the car door and stepped out into the warm, warm, in truth hot summer sun of eastern Colorado. I cannot believe you've done this to me," she said to her car, retrieving herself from the cup holder in the center console of the car. She looked at the complete lack of bars on her service icon. Great, just great. Stranded, you've stranded us out in the middle of nowhere. She glanced around, somehow soothed by the fact that there was not a building or car in sight, just miles and miles of prairie grass and high plains. Well, at least we're not too far. I can walk it from here, but you'll have to wait until Uncle Bean can come tow you, you poop. Walking around to the passenger side of the car. Fairly laughed at herself and said, "As if I'm going to get run over out here if a car comes by. I could have just gotten my purse out through the driver's seat." Yet, as she opened the passenger door to retrieve her purse, she heard the rumble of a truck's engine and glanced up to see a big white pickup rolling up the road toward her. "Oh no," she moaned. "Rural people are always so friendly. He's probably going to stop and ask if I need help." And sure enough, as the pickup slowed down and pulled over to the side of the road just behind Fairly's car, her heart sped up with trepidation. A stranger. Fairly wasn't all too comfortable with strangers, especially strangers she'd never met before. Quickly, she snatched her purse out of the passenger seat and began rooting around inside in search of the can of pepper spray she always carried with her. She heard the pickup truck door open and close. Heard a man's voice say, "Do you need some help, ma'am?" Where is that pepper spray? She whispered, growing frantic. Car trouble, hmm? The man's voice said. The man's voice was closer now, which, of course, to Fairly meant that the man was closer as well. Thus, since she hadn't been able to find her pepper spray, she looked up, silently reminding herself that she needed to clean her purse out again. After all. What good would pepper spray do her against a possible attacker when she couldn't find it in her purse because there were too many store receipts, empty gum wrappers, and other miscellaneous to dig through? However, in an instant, in less than a breath or the bat of an eyelid, the elusive pepper spray hiding somewhere in her purse was all but forgotten. For standing before her, right there before her, not three feet away, was the best-looking, most gorgeous. Handsomest man she had ever seen in all her life. No, seriously, she thought out loud with lingering bewilderment at how perfectly stunning the man standing before her was, wearing a worn pair of Levi's, dusty cowboy boots, and a short-sleeved plaid print snap-up shirt that hung open, revealing a bronzed, perfectly sculpted torso that was simply a mass of muscles. She was so unsettled by the man's appearance. That she wasn't sure whether she was whispering aloud to herself or her car. Either way, the man asked, "Beg your pardon, ma'am." "Oh, oh, nothing," Fairly said as she began rummaging in her purse again. But the man's presence and appearance had entirely rattled her, as her awe-inspired brain obviously quit sending out instructions to the rest of her body. Fairly felt her purse slip from her hands, watched in humiliated dismay. As its contents tumbled out and scattered over the shoulder of the road, oops! The man said, pushing his hat back a bit as he hunkered down and began gathering up store receipts, her wallet, and gum wrappers. Let me help you there. As the man handed Fairly handfuls of purse litter, 
fairly stuffed them back into her purse, all the while snatching quick glances at him, studying his unbelievably good looks. His arms were sun-bronzed and muscular, his hands clean but well calloused, evidencing a life of hard work. He glanced up at her once, and she didn't look away quickly enough to avoid eye contact. Thus she saw that his eyes were green, their unusually bright shade accentuated by the bronze skin and two or three days' whisker growth of his face. Oh my gosh, Fairly heard herself whisper with awe as her attention lingered a moment on his lips, his flawlessly shaped, entirely masculine lips. Pardon me? the man asked. Oh, oh, nothing, Fairly stammered. The man smiled at her then, apparently amused by something, but Fairly was wholly mesmerized into a moment of speechlessness by his bright white teeth and pure, dazzling nature of his expression. Were you looking for this by any chance? he asked. Huh? Fairly breathed, still hypnotized by his physical charms. She looked down at what he held in his hand and offering it to her, blushing to the very tips of her toes when she saw her elusive little canister of pepper spray. Um, yes, thank you, she said, accepting the pepper spray. I mean, no, no, of course not. I mean, thank you. The man chuckled and said, I've never seen pepper spray in a pink thing like that before. Fairly smiled, thinking of her mother. Part of the proceeds went to help with breast cancer research, she blurted out. Well, that's awful nice, the man said sincerely. Now, he began, standing to his full and very tall height once more, it does seem you're a bit of a damsel in distress. Or did you just stop for a minute or two to rest? Fairly sighed as she stood again as well, glancing at her car. Nope, it stopped on me, she answered. But I can walk the rest of the way. It's not far, and then my uncle can come and tow it somewhere. Walk? the man asked. What's well, more than five miles to the nearest farmhouse? He grinned at her, and Fairley's heart leapt with delight. Why don't you let me drive you to wherever you're headed? You can keep that pink pepper spray pointed at me, if it'll make you feel better. Fairley smiled back at him. No, no, that's okay. I'm pretty sure the nearest farmhouse is exactly where I'm headed. My uncle is Bean Jones. I mean, Ben Jones. Well, I know Ben Jones right well, ma'am, the man assured her. Let me just drop you off at the Jones place. Ben would have my head if I left his niece out here for the buzzards to pick at. Really? Fairly asked, glancing up to the sky to ensure that a flock of scavenging birds wasn't flying overhead, waiting to pick her eyes out. I don't like buzzards, she said. I remember when I was getting ready to start first grade. My mom took me over to the elementary school the day before we were supposed to start, you know, to look at the list and see whose class I was in. But when I saw the list and read that my teacher was Miss Buzzard, I looked at my mom funny, and she just said, Oh, how wonderful, Fairly. Do you know that a buzzard is a kind of bird? And you like birds so much. How fun to have a teacher named after a bird. But later that same afternoon, we went to Grandma's house, and she asked me what my teacher's name was. And I said, Miss Buzzard. And Grandma said, Oh, Fairly, how fun. Do you know what a buzzard is? A buzzard is a big, ugly bird that eats the rotting carcasses of dead animals. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? Of course, I burst into tears and said I didn't want to go to school, and Fairly realized she had been rambling. Venturing a look at the handsome stranger, and thinking that she'd always wanted to meet a handsome stranger, but never thought the handsome stranger she might one day meet would ever in a million years be as handsome as this stranger. She said, Sorry. But the handsome stranger was wearing an alluring smile, while his eyes seemed to glisten with being thoroughly entertained. That's all right, ma'am. And I apologize for inadvertently playing on your fears like that. Poor little thing, you must have been horrified, wondering what in the world your teacher would be like, hmm? Yeah, Fairley said blushing and adjusting her glasses with one finger and thumb. She didn't need glasses, of course, but found that she liked to wear them anyway. She'd had a friend who had done that when they were teenagers, purchased a pair of designer frames, and had just plain old non-corrective lenses put in them just to wear for fun. So, Fairley had purchased a pair, too. Yet instead of wearing the glasses as a fashion accessory, Fairley found that, for some reason, she felt more protected from other people when she wore them. So, she'd taken them on as a permanent accessory, 
wearing them most of the time she was out in public. In that moment, she kind of wished the glasses were real. That way she could remove them, thereby not being able to see the handsome stranger as clearly and perhaps not being nearly as intimidated as she felt in that moment. So your name is Fairly, I take it? he asked, still smiling with amusement. Yes, she said, tucking her purse under her left arm and offering her right hand to the man in greeting. Fairly Jones. Well, it's nice to meet you, Fairly Jones, he said, taking her hand in a firm grasp that sent a wave of titillating warmth traveling through her wrist and up her arm. Lash Lantry, he offered, and I really do think you should let me drive you to your uncle's farm. It's awful hot out today. He smiled again, teasing, and we wouldn't want any buzzards showing up to feed on your dead carcass now, would we? Again Fairly blushed, razzle-dazzled by him. No, sir, she answered. Come on then, Miss Fairly Jones. Let's get you to your Uncle Ben's place, the handsome Lash Lantry said. He stepped aside, gesturing that she should precede him. And if it makes you feel better, you just go ahead and keep that pink pepper spray handy, he added just till we get to your Uncle Ben's place, hmm? Fairly's blush still hadn't cooled from a moment before, but now she could tell it was redder than ever. She nodded, however, and walked toward the passenger side of his pickup. When the man reached out and opened the door for her, offering a hand to assist her in climbing up into the passenger seat, she thought that maybe she was actually under surveillance from one of those shows on TV where people are secretly being recorded while being punked or something. Thus, after she had settled into the passenger seat of the pickup and sat clutching her purse like an old lady who had just withdrawn her life savings from the bank in cash and put it in her wallet, and after the handsome stranger named Lash had closed the pickup's passenger door, trapping her inside, Fairly looked out across the high plains on either side of the pickup and then to the back and front. Nope, she said. No place to hide cameras out here. Maybe he's legit. What's that? Lash asked as he smoothly slid into the driver's seat. Oh, nothing, Fairly answered. I just have a bad habit of talking to myself out loud, she admitted. My brothers call me the narrator and say I narrate everything. Lash Lantry smiled again and turned the key in the ignition of his pickup, and the diesel engine roared to life. As he pulled from the shoulder back onto the isolated road, Fairly giggled. Something funny? Lash asked, grinning at her and then looking back to the road as he drove. Yes, she answered. I was just thinking that this is totally like something I saw on an old TV commercial once. You know, there's this dorky girl and her car breaks down, and this really hot guy pulls up and gets out of his truck, rips off his shirt to take the radiator cap off her steaming radiator, and then has her hop in his truck and they drive off. She giggled again. It's just kind of unreal, right? Lash shrugged and tried to keep from chuckling, because it was obvious the girl hadn't realized that she'd just called him really hot, and gestured toward him as she described the pretense of the commercial she'd seen. He liked her for that, and for the way she prattled on and on. It was cute. He sneaked a quick glance at her, and again had to force himself not to laugh at the way she was clutching her little pink canister of pepper spray in one hand. Did she really think he was some kidnapping serial killer or something? But then again, kidnapping serial killers always seem to show up in the most unlikely places. So maybe she wasn't being too paranoid after all. Lash sneaked another quick glance at the young woman he'd found on the side of the road. So you're Ben and Pearl's niece, hmm? He asked, though he already knew the answer. Yep, she chirped, smiling with obvious delighted anticipation. Are you just out here for a visit with them? He ventured. Lash was just making cordial small talk, of course. Still, he found that he was kind of interested in just exactly why the Joneses' niece was on her way to her aunt and uncle. Well, kind of, she answered. He chuckled. <laughs> How do you kind of visit someone? Well, I am here for a visit, she began, but I just don't know for how long. I'm kind of between semesters and or jobs and or boyfriends and or apartments. So Uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl invited me out to stay with them and help them get some things straightened out with the house and their wills and stuff like that. Plus, I've always loved it out here. I used to spend the summers out here with them when I was little. She paused only long enough to giggle. In fact, I remember this one summer, seeing those boots you're wearing reminded me of this for some reason, 
But one summer I was out here and Uncle Bean took me down to the feed store and bought me my first pair of cowboy boots. Well, cowgirl boots if you're going to be technical about it. Anyway, I wore my little boots everywhere I went for the whole time I was here. I loved them. They just made me feel so much like those pretty girls that barrel race at the rodeo, you know? I was determined that when I grew up, I was going to come back to Uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl's house and barrel race or enter to be chosen as the Dairy Queen. Oh, such dreams I had. But you see, the thing was, I was outgrowing those boots really fast. I couldn't figure out why because all of my other shoes fit fine. So I just kept squishing my feet into them and going out in the pasture to chase field mice or lick on the pretty pink sparkling salt blocks Uncle Ben had out in the fields. I licked those things for years before I realized what they were for, by the way, and why they had the nice, smooth, cow-tongue-sized groove in the middle. But I wore my boots forever that summer, just endured the pain when they seemed to be getting smaller. But then, one day, I couldn't take it anymore. I went to my Uncle Bean and told him that I had outgrown my cowgirl boots and needed a new pair. He was astonished, of course, and told me it wasn't possible. But then I explained to him how they hurt my feet, and my toes felt cramped, and so he took them off me and jammed his hand in there as far as he could. Then he started laughing and got a kitchen spoon and started digging around in there. Well, you see, whilst I was wandering about in the pastures and stuff, and I always thought that cowboy boots protected you from anything, so I just walked wherever I wanted. Well, it turns out that all the fresh cow manure I was tromping around in without Aunt Pearl knowing, Well, it wasn't really magically disappearing when I took my boots off every night like I thought. Nope, it was collecting in the toes of my beautiful cowgirl boots, collecting there and drying up overnight so that when I put them back on the next morning, it felt like my boots were too small. Fairly Jones finally stopped for breath. Shrugging, she asked. Now why was I telling you that? Then quickly, oh yes, so I'm kind of visiting them, you know. Like when you buy a plane ticket to go somewhere like, say, I don't know, maybe like Idaho, but you don't know when you're coming back, so you just leave it open-ended like. So that's what I'm doing. Well, there you go then, Lash remarked, trying so hard not to laugh that his throat hurt. And I know what you mean about the manure in your boots. That used to happen to me when I was a kid, too. Really? she asked, smiling with having found a comrade in cowboy boot manure issues. How about the salt licks in the field? Or am I the only city girl idiot you've ever encountered? He chuckled then, because he couldn't hold it in any longer. Nope, that's pretty much a farm kid thing too. Although I did know what they were for. I just didn't care. But they tasted so good and salty, she exclaimed. And the ones my Uncle Bean put in the pastures were so, so, so pretty. They looked like rose quartz, except with sparkly diamond glitter mixed in. She paused for a moment, and then added, more to herself than to him, You know, I've always loved rose quartz. I have like a collection of pieces I found over the years, even a bracelet that's made out of polished rose quartz. She looked at him, her expression entirely sincere, as she asked, Do you think that's why I've always had a fondness for collecting rose quartz? Because it reminds me of those big salt blocks Uncle Bean put out for his cattle? I think that could very well be. Lash managed to answer with just a smile instead of laughter. Hmm, who knew? Fairly said. This girl was entirely too entertaining for her own good. Lash figured that anyone who spent any amount of time in her company would leave feeling as if they'd just been drinking from the fountain of youth or something. After all, he'd only spent a few minutes with her so far, and he already felt better, younger, and more energetic. It didn't hurt that she was pretty, too. Not drop-dead supermodel gorgeous, but what guy really wanted that anyway? But just really, really very pretty. And cute. And cute was the best part of it. She had long brown hair that she'd swept back by raking her fingers through it when she'd first gotten in his pickup. Her eyes were brown, her eyelashes uniquely long and dark, and her lips were just perfectly pink. She wore a pair of jeans, a plain red torso-hugging t-shirt, and running shoes. Nothing too showy but perfectly cute on her, especially on her. Well, I'm sure your uncle and aunt will be wanting you to stay for as long as they can keep you, he told her. After all, why would they ever let her leave? Oh, I don't know about that, she sighed. I can talk too much sometimes. Oh, I don't believe that for a minute, he teased her. She smiled at him, recognizing his sarcasm, and then Lash couldn't resist. So. Why do you call your Uncle Ben Uncle Bean instead of Ben? 
Lash smiled when the pretty girl took his bait, hook, line, and sinker, and swam off with it. Oh, that, she giggled. It's not really that interesting of a story. Well, tell me anyway, Lash urged. For one thing, he figured that even if the source that inspired Ben Jones's niece to call him Uncle Bean instead of Uncle Ben wasn't funny, the way she told it was bound to be. So, you know that British comedian, Rowan Atkinson, she began. Yeah, the guy that plays Mr. Bean, Lash affirmed. Exactly, Fairley exclaimed, obviously delighted that he knew the actor she was talking about. Well, when I was little, my brothers used to watch all those old Mr. Bean shows, and I loved Mr. Bean so much that I just started calling Uncle Ben Uncle Bean. And the funny part was that I thought it was so witty for some reason that I'd say, I love you, Uncle Bean, or something like that, just laughing and laughing and laughing. I cracked myself up a lot when I was little. Lash smiled. But you don't crack yourself up now? He couldn't help asking. Nope, she answered. Now I pretty much just think I'm an idiot. At first, Lash smiled, thinking she was teasing. But when he glanced at her to see her staring out the front window with not one hint of an expression of the mirth that had been on her pretty face a moment before, he thought maybe she was serious. Fairley's determination not to talk the haughty man's ear off on the way to her uncle and aunt's place was short-lived, for in the very next moment, as Lash Lantry turned his pickup onto Rural Road 16, her heart suddenly swelled inside her. At the mere sight of her Uncle Bean's farm, the cattle in the far-off pasture, her Aunt Pearl's clothesline bestrewn with clean white sheets billowing in the breeze, all the lovely feelings she'd known as a child whenever she visited washed over her like river rapids. There it is, she exclaimed. I'm finally back. Fairly sighed as she pushed the window down button and was instantly enveloped in the fragrance of alfalfa growing rich and green in the fields, of sunshine and cow manure, straw, irrigation water, and all the soothing, mellow scents of her uncle's farm. She could see the sprinklers out in the fields, and though she couldn't hear them because of the roar of the pickup's big diesel engine, she knew the familiar, rhythmic sound they made was there and vowed that as soon as the pickup engine stopped or was gone, she would close her eyes and listen for them. Nowhere else in all the world felt more like home to Fairley Jones. It had been that way ever since she was a little girl. Uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl's place called to her, as if some unseen spirit twin was always waiting there for her, beckoning for her to return. And now she had. She was back and the realization stripped away so much of her stress and worry that Fairley wondered if she would ever be able to bring herself to leave again. Glancing to the handsome stranger who had come to her aid when her car had choked out in the side of the road, she said to herself, Even the men are better looking out here, and one thing's for sure, you are one good-looking man. What? Lash Lantry asked. Oh, oh, nothing, Fairley answered thankful that he hadn't heard what she'd thought out loud. As her Uncle Bean and Aunt Pearl's old dog, Walter, hurried off the porch of the house to bark at the arriving pickup, Fairley sighed, and all is right with the world.